What's up guys? We are back with another Marvel Legends review taking a look at the latest Amazon exclusive to come through and that would be the very long-awaited Family Matters 3-pack, the one that we got announced back at Toy Fair, right? I believe? Probably. So we've got the latest Amazon exclusive with Magneto, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch, three figures in very classic costumes that I don't know, just about everybody is really interested in. Myself in particular because I love this trio of characters in general and I've really been looking forward to getting a very classic Magneto. So this really speaks to me. So this thing comes in the larger format, um, you know, multi-figure package. Standard stuff for Legends, just bigger. So you've got all your figures there in the window. We've got the X-Men logo. We've got the 80 Years logo. We've got artwork on the side panels. And then on the back of the package, we've got a smattering of different versions of the characters throughout the years from the comics, as well as a bit of a write-up. So let's do it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. And here they are out of the package, our Quicksilver, Magneto, and Scarlet Witch figures. And I got to say right off the bat, this set is really doing it for me on a number of levels. I think we've got a really solid three pack here. You know, one of the few Marvel Legends multi packs that I've gotten in a while personally that I've just got no huge issues with. I really, really like these figures. And I think for me personally, they are just hitting all the right buttons. So we're going to take a look at each one individually and we're going to start with Magneto and then we'll pick it up with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. So Magneto here is, of course, a lot like the figure that we got in, what, the Apocalypse Wave. He's very similar. He's built on basically the same body, but he's not exactly the same figure. There are differences, and I'll do a comparison, but for the most part, they are quite the same when it comes to just general construction. So the head can go up about that far, and then he goes down pretty good. Rotate side to side. Arms go out. You do, of course, have a different cape that you have to deal with. It's got a more billowing shoulder pad, so it is going to get in the way of rotation specifically, but it can do it. You've got bicep swivel, we've got double jointed elbows, and then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. We have got an ab crunch, so he goes back and he goes forward all the way, pretty good. And then you've got a waist twist, which is hidden pretty well by this belt piece. Legs go out only about that far, kick forward, not much on the backswing. You've got a thigh cut, you've got double jointed knees, and then you've got a boot cut, and then you've got rocker, and of course hinges down at the ankles. So he moves pretty well. I mean, he's exactly what you might expect him to be. There's no real surprises here. He's a Magneto figure. We've seen one not too long ago, and this guy is just a lot of the same done up in a more classic style. Articulation aside, I'm sure, just like me, the main reason most people are getting this figure is because of how he looks. This is Magneto. The Magneto we got with the Apocalypse Wave was a pretty cool figure, and it's a nice-looking suit. It's a nice-looking Magneto, but this is Magneto. There is no denying it. The classic red and purple is what I would say everybody wants. I'd be surprised if somebody said they really wanted something different. But this is the figure that, for me personally, is what I've been waiting for. And as soon as we got that other figure, I knew that this was coming. And this guy is very similar, but uh, I'll show you a comparison between the two. They are very similar, while at the same time being pretty different in a lot of small ways. So you've got the same kind of body here, which is just done up in red plastic. And then you've got the purple accents that are painted on for the bracers. And then you've got purple gloves. And then you've got the purple uh, stripes down here on the boots, as well as the purple actual soles of the boots as well. You do have a floating belt piece here. It's really tight on the figure, but it can move up and down, and it helps to hide the uh, the seam there between the abs and the crotch piece, and it looks pretty nice. It's got a little bit of a, of a metallic sheen to it. The cape is interesting. It has a peg that sticks into the back, but there's also this little piece right here that uh, sticks out. It kind of makes the cape kind of billow out from him. I'm not too sure if I really like that. I, kinda, I feel like I kind of want to shave it down or cut it off almost so the peg can really sit in there and it doesn't kind of wobble around because I feel like it, it moves a little too much. It does look really nice though. It flows really well. There is a paint on it. There's some black paint up here at the top on the shoulders. There's black paint on the inside as well for shading and then you've got metallic parts for the more 
metal pieces that surround the collar of the cape. The figure is really, in general, kind of basic. I mean, it's Magneto. He doesn't have the most outlandish costume, but I think they did a pretty good job. My only real gripe is that I feel like the cape kind of bobbles around too much. I think it's due to that extra piece uh, in here that uh, keeps it sort of pushed back a bit, but you can you can sort of finagle that. The real, real good, fun aspect of this figure for me is, of course, in the head sculpt. And this head, like a bunch of other small details on this figure, is different from the heads that we got with the previous Apocalypse Wave figure. So that one had the closed, well, not the closed eyes, but the uh, the pupilless eyes. And of course, he has just a different facial structure to, to begin with. Of course, the helmet is entirely different. They're not even close to the same, same shape, really. But of course, the details are all different. So you've got a, you know, kind of candy red helmet with all of the purple accents that are sculpted on there. And they look pretty nice. The paint is a little metallic, so it matches and kind of melds in with the with the metal part around his uh, his collar here and then the face inside is nicely done eyes are really straight and clean I've seen a lot of good eyes come out of this particular set so far mine in particular all of them look fantastic and this one is no exception it's a very classic looking magneto and I think they absolutely nailed it there's a lot to really like about this figure my only real gripe again is it's a little bit of a problem with that cape but otherwise I think he is a pretty flawless looking figure and as I mentioned, here is a quick comparison between the two. So you've got different head sculpt, different cape, different shoulder pads. You've got the lack of a belt on this figure, different gauntlets, different uh, boots, and of course an entirely different color scheme. And then the entire cape is different as well. It's a different shape, different cut, the whole deal. And of course they even come with different hands, they come with different effect pieces. So they are you know, two halves of a whole almost. They very much fit different eras for Marvel. This is going to be my preferred Magneto. I still really like this figure, but it's kind of a no contest thing. Once I have this guy, he instantly becomes my favorite. Now, as far as accessories goes, Magneto comes with a lion's share of accessories when it comes to this overall set, and I think he benefits from them greatly. We have got a second head sculpt, so this is one without the pupils, and he's got gritting teeth, so he's very much, you know, kind of going crazy, getting very powered up. A maniacal looking expression just as good quality wise as the first head sculpt just a different expression and then you've got some effect pieces here so you've got these uh very overused although i don't see them too often anymore the kind of bubble power effects the previous magneto came with the lightning type effects that we've started seeing more more recently these work pretty well for this though i, I see this you know very much as like a classic expression of magneto's powers so for this use i'm actually pretty happy with them and then of course they're done up in purple and he does have a pair of interchangeable hands so you've got a pair of purple fists to top him off now for Quicksilver, we have what I think is a very appropriate body in use here. This is that slightly more slender, but very muscular, very agile Sunfire type body. And I think it works really well here. So we've got a head that can look up really far so you can get him into like a crouch down running position, which works great. The head can look down pretty far as well. It's nothing really in the way here. And then you've got full rotation. Arms do go out, they rotate, and then you do have a butterfly joint. So pretty far forward and backward bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist, we've got an ab crunch so he goes backwards, forwards really far, and then a waist twist. Legs only go out about that far, but it's, it's decent enough and it seems to work fine for me. Uh, they kick forward about 90 degrees. Back a little bit, you've got a thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then you've got your boot cut as well as rocker and hinge down at those ankles. So this guy moves around about as well as I would have expected, especially on this body. Nothing really gets in the way, and you can get him into some very, very dynamic poses. Now in the looks department, this figure is pretty basic, and that's to be expected, really. There's not too much going on with him. He is blue and white with a little black thrown in there when it comes to his costume, but I think they've done a really good job here for the most part. I do have a little bit of an issue with paint applications on the lightning bolt pattern as it goes through the musculature on the figure. I know that's not really uncommon with Legends, but you can see some spotting in there, which definitely breaks it up and makes it look a little less than desired, but I understand why it's happening. The body, like I said, I think is very appropriate for this figure. We have got some of that pearly, uh, pearlescent metallic type plastic in use, which I've said a number of times I really like. So we've got that on the hands, the feet, the shins, as well as the wrist. And then this top part of the wrist is, uh, is painted to match the rest of the body. And it matches pretty well. 
The rest of the figure, though, I mean, it's just cast in that kind of teal blue color, which I think works really, really well. Again, this body is pretty well suited for this type of character, and I think they did a good job uh, translating this look into plastic. Again, my only real gripe when it comes to looks is that I do have these kind of smudges and nicks and almost gouges when it comes to that pearly white paint on the lightning bolt. The head sculpt is another area where I think they've got him pegged down pretty well. It's He's got a very overconfident, smarmy kind of expression going on, and it very well suits his character. The sculpt work on the lines is nicely done. The expression is very nicely done. You've got the white, bushy eyebrows. Eyes are really, for, really forward-facing, very straight, very clean. And then the hair sculpt on this guy is fantastic. It's got a bit of a windswept look. It's got nice gray with some wash in there to bring out that sculpt even more. So I really dig the head sculpt on this figure. I really dig the body on this figure. My only, Again, my only real gripe is a few paint nicks here and there. Otherwise, it's pretty solid in the looks department. Now, for accessories, we only have an extra set of hands. You've got these, what are very commonly used as like chopping hands, karate chop hands, but these are clearly meant to mimic the running positions where he's kind of throwing his hands in front or behind him. So you've got a pair of these hands to mix and match with your fists. I wish he would have had some kind of effect piece, something that you could have put around his feet to maybe mimic him blasting off or, you know, kicking up a cloud of dirt or some sort of lightning effect or something. I'm not sure if that's even feasible at this cost level, but I feel like it's kind of missing just for me personally, but I'm happy with what we got because, you know, you can still make this figure work just fine without it. But just think of how sweet that would have been. And lastly, we've got Wanda the Scarlet Witch, and this is a great interpretation of this figure. I'm very, very happy with how this one turned out. She is a little bit more restrictive in her articulation than the other two figures, and there's one very big reason why, and that would be this massive head of hair coupled with the cape. So the cape does not peg into her back like Magneto's does. It's actually more of a scarf type of cape, so it sits under the head above the shoulders. So you've got this head of hair, and then you've got this plastic piece here, so it just sort of gets in the way. So the head can rotate, but she's really, really limited on the up and down motion. She can get a bit of a down position, but she really only sits mostly neutral. The arms go out, and they rotate. Of course, no bicep swivel. We've got rotating and single jointed elbows, and then you have got rotation and hinge at the wrist. She's got an upper diaphragm, so she goes back, she goes forward a little bit, and then she bobbles side to side and then rotates. Legs go out that far, they kick forward and they kick back. You've got a thigh cut, double jointed knees, and they go back decently, but not as far as the other two. And then you've got rocker and hinge down at those ankles. So she's kind of standard fare when it comes to a Legends female. I wasn't expecting anything different. The only real problem is that her fantastically done head sculpt gets in the way of articulation. Now, when it comes to the looks, I think Hasbro's done a really good job with this figure. I'm really happy with the way she turned out. I don't have the older one, so I'm pretty happy that I don't now because I don't need two Scarlet Witches, and this is definitely my preference between those figures. I get a very Adam Hughes look when I think of this figure. Uh, it's very classics-inspired, but I, I get a very Adam Hughes look and feel out of this one, which definitely works for me. The figure is a lot of molded plastic as far as the body goes, so you've got the molded mid-torso, and then you've got molded feet and hands, but a lot of the figure is the uh, pearly pink metallic plastic, which I really dig. It gives her a nice shimmer in the light, and she's pretty basic in terms of her look, pink and then a kind of maroon color, but I think they did a good job picking this kind of plastic rather than going just with a flat pink. That definitely speaks to me and my interest in particular. You've got the removable cape, which again, like I mentioned, just sits between the head and the shoulders, and it's got this big open area back here because it's actually like a wrap that sits around the ball peg on the neck, so it wraps around that. You could pop it off if you want. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want to. She'd look kind of goofy without it, but it is uh, really nicely sculpted. It hangs really well. It doesn't really get in the way of her too much, but it does kind of billow backwards. The, the key defining characteristic, though, for this figure is, is clearly above the neck. The head sculpt on this figure, for me, is one of the stars of this pack. I think they have done a stellar job with this. The lips are incredibly well painted. The eyes are really nicely done. There is a lot more paint than you might think in those eyes, around the eyes for the eyeliner, the eyebrows. Everything looks fantastic. Her large headpiece is really nicely done with the hair that kind of pokes through the front. Not to mention, again, this humongous head of hair that does have a lot of paint on it. There is a lot of brown with some black wash in there to bring it all out. It's just a very attractive looking head sculpt. I think Hasbro absolutely knocked it out of the park when it came to this figure and just the head in general. 
Now for accessories, Scarlet Witch has no more or less than Quicksilver, but I think she has the better selection when it comes to just the two that they gave her. She has these two kind of weird effect pieces, and I'm not sure if I've ever seen these before. They do not ring a bell with me, so if someone knows, let me know. I'm sure I either, one, don't have the figure or just can't remember at this point, but she's got these kind of swirly pink guys here that fit over her wrist. You can put them over her hand so you can have them kind of swirling up her arm. They are, uh, you know, flimsy kind of bendable plastics. You can kind of put them in whatever way you can find, but I like that we have effect pieces. These are not what I would have normally expected to see with her. I would have expected to get the kind of stuff we got with Magneto, but I'm glad we got something that has a little bit more of a smoke mysticism kind of vibe for her because I think I think it fits her pretty well, if not still being kind of a weird little effect piece. So overall, this is a must-have set. There's really no other way for me to say it. If you are even remotely a comic or X fan when it comes to Legends, this is kind of a no-brainer. I'm very, very happy with all three of these figures. They all do have maybe one thing that I've found to be a little bit of an annoyance, but there's nothing here that would make me say, oh, absolutely don't buy that, or just don't buy that because of that particular problem. These are all great figures. They look exceptional. They are very, very nice interpretations of classic versions of three very big X-related characters. So right then and there, I was already on board, but Hasbro really delivered with this set, and I'm very, very happy with it. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Magneto Quicksilver Scarlet Witch Family Matters 3-pack. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.